Today I am sharing with you five wonderful recipes that you can feed your family up to 15 times with for only $27 with ingredients at your local Walmart. So if you're ready to save some money and fill your bellies, keep watching. Here on the screen, I am leaving with you a full grocery list with prices of everything that you're going to need to make these five soup recipes. And these are prices that you can find at your local Walmart. No sale, no coupon, no clearance produce required. And I'm also going to leave the full grocery list down in the description box below. So if you're taking notes, heading to the grocery store to get these ingredients, you can do that as well. For this first recipe, we're gonna start with about four pounds of peeled and chopped russet potatoes and half of a large onion diced. Put that into a large pot. I'm using an eight quart here for most of these recipes. And you'll fill that up with water. Once that comes to a boil, you can add half of a block of cream cheese to make that nice and creamy. And I season it pretty heavily with some salt and pepper. I feel like you just can't have enough of either when it comes to a potato. And then once that is all combined, you'll add some potato flakes to thicken it. For flavor, the options are endless. You can use plain potato flakes as your cheapest option, but I love using the Pepper Jack Monterey so yummy and then once this is thickened to your preference you can also add some milk to make it creamy if you accidentally make it too thick add extra milk if it's not thick enough add some extra uh, potato flakes it's super easy now this recipe will feed my family four times. So what I like to do with the extra soup is put it into dinner size portions, Ziploc bag and into the freezer flat. Another way to use your leftovers, say you're not into soup that much or you don't have that much freezer space, you can make a casserole. Just thicken up that soup with some extra potato flakes. You can buy some cheap ham or bacon, layer that in with some cheese. You can wrap it up, stick it in your fridge, use it later in the week, or even put it in your freezer. Getting started here, I'm using a bag of pinto beans, but you can also use canned. I'm just going to put these in my Instant Pot for the easiest cook in the world, about 30 minutes on high pressure. For my meat, I chose a ground turkey. That was the cheapest option. And then I added to the pot a half of a chopped onion and a lot of taco seasoning. It's up to you what kind of flavor you wanna do. Our family just prefers taco, but you can use a chili packet or just chili powder. Once that is cooked, I added a large can of tomato sauce to help it get thick. And then I also added a lot of water and half of a can of diced tomatoes with the juice. You're gonna also wanna add about three cups of your pinto beans that you cooked and let that simmer for close to two hours. The longer, the better. This recipe easily made four dinners for us. I did a bowl of chili the first night. We had chili over baked potatoes another night and then a full bag for the freezer, which would give us another two meals there for the future. Here I'm starting by preparing the chicken for two recipes. I'm using a five pound bag of chicken on the bone with the skin that's going to make the best broth. And I season it really heavily with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to add about nine cups of water to my eight quart instant pot. But you can also do this on the stove top. You can do it in a slow cooker. This is just going to make it very fast. I'm only gonna put it in for about 24 minutes. All right, if you are intimidated to use your Instant Pot like I was, I get it. You have to try it. It is seriously a game changer. Next, I'm going to separate the meat off of the bone, make sure there's no fat, skin, all that stuff taken off, and then we're going to save all that broth. And I like to strain it first. That way there's no weird bits left in it. In an eight quart sauce pot, I am adding about two or three cups of our pinto beans, a can of corn, half of our chicken, and then half of the diced tomatoes with their juice, and then a lot of taco seasoning, and half of a diced onion. I added several cups of water, let that cook for a while, and then I added half of a block of cream cheese. Once that was mixed in, it was ready to serve, but I also like to use enchilada sauce or hot sauce 
It's optional, you don't have to do that, but it definitely takes the soup to the next level. This will feed my family two, sometimes three times, so I bag up the rest for the freezer, but you could also serve this over rice or put it into tortillas for burritos. This next recipe is where we're using the rest of our chicken and chicken broth that we set aside. We're also going to add half of a chopped onion, a couple of stalks of celery chopped, and a couple of cups of diced carrots. To that, we will add the rest of our chicken broth, the shredded chicken, and then you can put it into Ziploc bags, freeze it, stick it in your fridge, and you can pull it out for different recipes later. I'm gonna show you how I would do that. I pull out a bag of the broth with all the vegetables uncooked, put it into a pot and let that cook for a little while until the vegetables are soft. This is the point where you can then add something to it to make it a complete meal. You can add noodles to it, you could add rice to it, you could even do a pot pie with it. But here I'm gonna show you how I do chicken and dumplings. First, I thicken it with some flour. This, I ended up using about a half of a cup. And if you use a whisk, it'll make sure you get all the lumps out. So just whisk that really good. And I'm going to leave the recipe for the buttermilk dumplings down below, but you're going to start with two cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, whisk that together, and then two tablespoons of butter. I had butter Crisco left over from Christmas, so I used that. And then you're going to either use a pastry cutter or a fork to get that all combined. Once that is all together, you're going to add one cup of buttermilk and mix that together until it forms basically just a ball. It's not going to be really sticky, but you're going to need to flour your counter and then put that ball down on the counter, push it down a little bit, and then you're gonna roll it out as thick as you want. The thicker they are, the longer it's gonna to take to boil. I like to do about a quarter inch thickness, but again, this is just a rough recipe. You can do whatever you want with it. Then I use my pizza cutter. I think it ends up making the easiest cuts and I just go along. They don't have to be perfect. It's kind of a rustic recipe, so make it however you want. And then once those are all in strips, I like to freeze half of them because again, this is a large recipe. My family is not that big. So I'm going to lay them out on a cookie sheet so that they can get in my freezer harden uh, frozen solid and then I can put them in a bag they won't stick together and I can use them for another recipe in the future with one of those bags of soup that I have to my cooked chicken broth and vegetables I like to add a little bit more water and some chicken bouillon or chicken base so it goes a little bit further and then once that's boiling I'm going to add my dumplings in carefully stir them around a little bit you don't want them to break but you're going to have them simmer in there for about 30 to 40 minutes I've never had an issue with dumplings feeling like they were overcooked so the longer you do this I feel like the better and they really do taste like Cracker Barrel I also wanted to use my chicken broth mixture for a pot pie, so I thickened it up even more than the dumplings recipe by adding some more flour. And then I just whipped up a really simple pie crust. I just used a half of a recipe because I didn't want crust on the bottom and the top. Honestly, I am not the one to share with you a good pie crust recipe. I struggle through it, I get it done, but I would much rather just go buy a pie crust at the store or have my mom make the pie crust because she is phenomenal. If you know my mom, you know she makes pies like none other. But mine is just a rustic recipe and it does the job. My family likes it. So I just put the filling in the pie pan, then I put the crust on top. You're gonna bake that until the top is cooked through. Or you could just wrap it up, stick it in your fridge for later in the week, or even wrap it in foil, label it, and put it in your freezer for times to come. This recipe ended up making four meals for us. It was the chicken pot pie, chicken and dumplings, and then two more bags to go in the freezer to add noodles, rice to, or those dumplings that I froze. The final recipe that I made was a broccoli cheddar soup. And I only ended up doing one batch, but I listed the ingredients and price for a double batch. For a single batch of this, you're going to start with half a stick of butter. Technical question, how do you know when uh, the butter is done? 
Well, it's done about two minutes before it looks like that. Just don't burn the butter, you don't want it brown. And saute half of a diced onion. Once that's cooked, you'll add two cups of chicken broth, and I did this by making my own with a chicken base. It's really easy. And then once that was all mixed together, I added two cups of regular milk. Then I needed to thicken this, so I added a quarter cup of flour and whisked that together really good. Make sure you get all the lumps out. And then I was able to add the vegetables. I used a cheese grater and shredded about a cup of carrots and then chopped up one bag of frozen broccoli, but you could also use fresh. And then you cook that in there until it's soft. Also add a good amount of salt and pepper. And then once that was all combined and soft, I was able to add two cups of cheddar cheese. I ended up serving this like a bread bowl the way that Sister Pat used to make for us back in college. But if you have the double batch with leftovers, you could add rice to it to make like a casserole or you could just freeze it in bags for later to do it again as a soup. That is it for this round of batch cooking. I hope you were able to find some inspiration. Maybe take some time to fill your freezer with some meals that will make your next week, next month easier when you don't feel like cooking or you forgot to thaw out some raw meat. We were able to save so much money by using the same ingredients across different recipes. That keeps you from having leftovers of the exact same thing over and over again, but also it allows you to not have any waste and use them all in their entire package. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.